Yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll make a start and hopefully anybody that's uh, joining late uh, can uh, catch up. So uh, for those of you that don't know me, um, my name's Richard Bates. I'm sales director for EBS. Um, thank you very much, obviously, for joining the session this morning. And just to let you know from a quick housekeeping point of view that we are recording the session and we will make this available afterwards. So if you want to share it uh, internally or if you happen to want to watch it again, you can do. Um, so we're joined this morning with Sam. Uh, Sam is from Dracer and he's going to be talking to you and showing you how the Spindle invoice document recognition works, um, often referred to as SPIR, another acronym for you. Um, so without further ado, I'll pass you over to Sam. Cheers, Rich. Thank you very much for that uh, lovely introduction. Hello, everyone who's on the call. Um, thank you for coming and uh, nice to see you here. So yeah, I'm Sam Steer. I'm one of the partner managers. So I work very closely with EBS um, from a Dracer point of view, and I'll be taking you through the document recognition piece today. So what we're going to look at today is I'm just going to run through a very, very, very brief PowerPoint about what the recognition module is and how it works and a little bit of background on us. And then we're going to dive straight into the product, see it in action, um, put some invoices through it, see how it works with Sage 200. Uh, once we've done that, we'll then open it up to some questions. So if you've got any questions, please send some messages in the chat or message Rich or uh, Darren as well, and we'll pick those up at the end. All right. So without further ado, I'm just going to turn off my camera and then start sharing my screen. Perfect. So spindle document recognition um, by ourselves at Dracer. So very quickly, who are we? Um, we have been working in this Sage channel for about 19 years now. Apologies if you've seen this before, if some of you already got Dracer products, but for those who haven't, um, this is who we are. We've won multiple awards in the industry. You can see we're used across the world. Um, thousands of organizations use us and this figure of 87,000 users worldwide is actually more like 140,000 um, at this present time. Um, I just haven't updated this in a while. So 140,000 users roughly worldwide at this moment in time. What do we do? So these are our products. This is uh, what we're going to be talking about today, the Spindle document recognition with its approvals module attached. But before that, we also have a document management suite, which is comprises of a distribution and a capture module. So this is for sending all documentation out of Sage 200, and this is for capturing all documentation back into Sage 200. And effectively, what we're trying to do there is to create a paperless office. We also have a few other modules. So we have a self-serve module with, that comes with a proof of delivery module. So um, if you want customers to view their own statement invoices, place orders um, on a website for themselves, you can do that. It also comes with a proof of delivery module. So if you have your own drivers, um, we enable a sign on glass technology so you can schedule delivery routes, sign on the glass to say you've received it, and then that proof of delivery is automatically uploaded into Sage 200. We also have an Excel data bridge, which is basically if you do lots of work in Excel and you put it back into Sage, and we have a special tool that allows you to create templates around that and it has a validation tool so it tells you if there is incorrect data and how to fix it. Finally, we have a credit control solution. Um, we have an on-premise and cloud version of this software and basically what we try to do with that is automate your credit control process by sending out letters to your customers based on um, criteria that you give the software. So if any of those take your fancy, just let the team at EBS know you'd like to have a look at them and we can explore those um, further um, another day. So without further ado, spindle document recognition. So why did we create it? So very, very brief background on it. We've looked at the statistics around processing purchase invoices. So Sage themselves did a study and found that 120 days per year was spent on admin. Uh, which is quite a lot and quite alarming, actually, that amount. And Gartner, who, if you're not sure who Gartner is, is one of the biggest uh, research, business research um, companies in the world. Um, and they estimate typical processing costs of an invoice in the UK is between four and £25. Pounds. Now, if you think about your own company um, and what you're doing at the minute, that, you know, is quite a lot of money. Can we get that down? Can we get that into the pence rather than into the pounds? And that's what we try to do with our software. So 
cloud enabled uh, solution. And it's developed with Iris, who are part of the Canon group. So part of this is that this software is usually used within an enterprise level. So it's usually used in the big, big companies turning over hundreds of millions of pounds a year um, and processing thousands of invoices um, a month, basically. It's self-learning, so it will learn how your suppliers send in invoices so it knows what to look for and how to check those, um, those invoices. There's no need for manual entry if you don't want there to be, so we can fully automate this process if we want to. But again, we can also put manual um, steps in there as well if you don't fully trust the automated solution or you just need to take baby steps with automation. So it uses IDR, intelligent document recognition, so it's constantly scraping and scanning the invoices to get the information it needs. We can do two or three way matching. So if you have, if you don't use GRNs or you do use a GRN, um, we can match or not match against those. You've got the flexibility to decide that. So we can match on the line level as well as overall. Fast return on, return on investment is the key to all of this. Um, and unlike other solutions, you do not need an OCR server um, with this one. With the, um, document recognition, you also get an approvals module. So if you have um, an approvals process for your purchase invoices currently, we can use it within our approvals module. So it's online, you can get the mobile phone app for iOS or Android, it'll work on tablets, whatever it is. So you can sit on the train on the way to work um, and do your approvals first thing in the morning or last thing at night if you want to. You can have unlimited approvers. And the best bit about the whole lot is it's free and comes as part of the module. So you can't say fairer than that for this one. We build our approvals workflows from loads of different criteria based within Sage 200, and we will have a little look at that. Now, what I'm going to do is just move us back into my demo software, and we will take a look at the recognition module. So hopefully you're all familiar with Sage 200. That's open and ready to go, but we're going to look at my document portal. So firstly, I need to get my documents into the software for it to recognize them. So I have one of four ways of doing that. Firstly, I can scan them. So if you still have any customer uh, suppliers, sorry, who still print or send you paper copies of um, purchase invoices, you can scan them directly into the software via a supported scanner. So we do recommend it has a twain driver in it. So these ones are quite common ones. Um, they're not a lot of money if you uh, don't already have one. So you can press scan and we'll get the document in here. You can browse to a file location and pick a document out via the um, browse button. So if I had a folder location full of purchase invoices. I could come in here and pick them out. I also have the option of dragging and dropping. So if I was to go into my emails, I've got a specific email set up for purchase invoices and I could drag and drop a purchase invoice straight in from my emails and now that's ready to go. The best way and the most um, efficient way that we have of doing this is you can link this software to uh, a mailbox. So maybe your account's payable at email and whenever an email gets dropped into this inbox and it has a PDF against it, it will automatically go and grab that PDF and put it through the software. So potentially, if you fully were to fully automate this process, you could have an invoice come into your inbox. It gets pulled out by the software, fully recognized and then posted and archived into Sage 200 within a matter of minutes. Um, and it would all just be done in the background. You wouldn't have to worry about anything. We can drag and drop multiple in. So if I was to put 30 or 40 in at one time, we could also do that. I'm just going to do the one just for the purposes of today. So when I'm ready, I just need to recognize it. And now it's been submitted for recognition. So I have my recognition module here. You can see this invoice is now being queued and shortly it is going to be um, ready for me to put into Sage 200. So when we look at 
an invoice. I mentioned earlier we can fully automate the process or we can have manual verification and checks in there. So what I've got, because it'd be a really short demo if I didn't do this, is I've put a manual verification on this invoice. So I'm going to open up my verification tool to have a look at what needs to be done and we'll take a look around um, the software itself. If there's an approval in the way, it won't post into Sage 200 until you have approved it as well, but that comes after any manual verification. So here's my invoice. I have lots of bits to look at here. So if we start on the far left hand side, I have got my accessibility tool. So if you want to make it, if you want to make the invoice bigger so you can see it, if you want to rotate it for any reason, if you're colorblind, you can actually um, take the color off and have it as pure black and white. It will do that for you. So we're trying to look after everyone there. We've got loads of accessibility tools to make it easy for you to see. We've then got five headers. So we've got our document header, our line items, our footer, project analysis, if you're using project accounting, and our nominal analysis here. And then each one of these has its own data, which we will see on the right hand side to start with. So all this data here, if I click in a box, so it started with the company, it will then show me where it's found that data um, it's referring to, and it will draw a little yellow box around it here as well. So this company is my company, Homestyle Kitchens Limited, and it's found that based on this bill to section here. It's then picked up my supplier by their VAT number. But with our software, because it is using intelligent recognition, it's not just looking for one piece of data. So for the example of a supplier, what it will do is it will look at the VAT number, it will look at the actual name of the supplier, it will look at the address, and it will also look at the payment details as well to make sure it is picking the right supplier from your Sage 200. If we move down, we have our invoice number here, our invoice date, is the document linked to a PO or not? So in my example, it is linked to a PO and it's purchase order number 3331. So if I just jump into Sage 200 and look for that purchase order to make sure it does exist and we're not just making things up, you can see here I've got 3331 Formica Warehouse Limited for 3236 and it is a live PO as we speak. So once I'm happy with that, I can move over to my next part, which is our line items. So you can see here it's picked up the line items from the item description. It's got all of our quantities, what's been received, unit price, etc. Or we can see all that from here. Now, a little nifty thing we can do with this, if you are wondering as a user, well, I thought 3331 actually had more line items in it. Um, how do I test that without having to jump backwards and forwards from Sage, you can literally press two buttons and it goes and looks for the purchase order within Sage 200 and pulls down everything that should be on it. So in this case, it is right. We have only got the one item with a quantity of three, so that's fine. We have the option to insert additional rows um, if we wanted to, and we can also delete. So we can customize this at the point of um, the invoice being in the verification tool. If we move to our footer, which is usually our incidental costs, so carriage charges, VAT, all those sorts of bits and bobs, and you can see we've got all this down here. Now, something that comes up quite a lot is um, maybe you've been charged incorrect VAT or you are in, you have ordered non-VATable items, but the um, supplier has sent you a VAT invoice. How does that work? Well, we have a button coming out in the next release where we can change our VAT code so it all matches up quite neatly and nicely for you. So we can edit the VAT rate if we need to. If you're using project accounting, we can assign these invoices to projects if it is something you are using and looking at. Um, and it works in the same way as everything else. We insert the project code if it's against it and the item codes, etc., and pop it all against it in here. Not as many people using that at the minute, so I won't spend too long on it and move to our nominal analysis. So this is a key, key part. So firstly, I've got this green field that's been highlighted. So the field must be confirmed manually. 
that's why this invoice hasn't been sent through our software and put straight to Sage 200 because I wanted someone to manually confirm this is the correct nominal code. To confirm it, I just press enter and now that has been manually confirmed. What I can do though is just like with the PO, I can drill into Sage and look at every single one of my nominal codes. I can search for them by these tabs up here and I can replace this nominal or I can insert additional nominals at this stage as well. So we have certain customers who will often have 30, 40 nominals at this stage um, and they just have a manual check to make sure they're all correct. So you can add as many nominals as you want. No one has actually hit the limit yet. So hopefully that should be enough for you there. Once we are happy with our invoice and it's all confirmed, I'm just going to press enter and that will then complete my invoice. So if I had any other documents to then uh, go through and process, I could do it from here, this screen, but I don't. So I'm just going to back into our software and now you can see rather than being verified, uh, verification required, it's now changed its status to recognized. It's now trying to post it into Sage 200. And then shortly after that, we'll get a message to say it's archiving and then posted and archived. OK, so that's all well and good. But what does that mean in reality? So if I go into Sage 200, this is my purchase order I've just been working against. If I refresh my list, you can now see the PO has been completed. If I drill into the PO and have a look at it, you can see that all the lines have been received and invoiced, so it's a completed purchase order. But what we have is these two little buttons down here. So this is part of our document management suite and these the document management suite and the spindle document recognition work in unison to give you this um, bit down here. So we can capture documentation at this point. But what it's done, it's very cleverly and automatically archived that purchase invoice oh if sage uh, fancies it against purchase order so i can come in here as a user at any point and open up this purchase invoice to see you know is this the right one so hopefully that is the right one so the software has then popped this against the purchase order and now it lives there forever so i can always go back and check on it at any point so very nice we can see that from the purchase ledger screen so we can look at it from if i was to go into our supplier list and go into formica warehouse we can see it from this screen as well from the transaction inquiry screen so you can see triple three one there's that purchase invoice again so we can look at it from there if we wanted to look at it from a nominal ledger point of view, if you could look at the nominal inquiry screen, choose the nominal that we assign to it, and then you could look at the, all the documents assigned to that nominal from there. So you can look at it from multiple different ways. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to capture a couple more documents just to give you a couple of examples of how, of just some different scenarios and what we can do. So. If I just go into my purchase invoices folder and I'm going to pick uh, this one. And I'm also going to pick this one. So if I recognize those. They will go through into my system. I could have just highlighted them all and sent them all through in one go, so you won't have to do them all individually. So these are now queued and analyzing, waiting to go. So I have two invoices here. First one is I'm just going to go through this one really quickly with you. Um, this is an invoice that's come in that doesn't have a purchase order against it because let's face it, not everyone uses purchase orders and some bills that come in aren't really needed for purchase orders. So I'm thinking more utilities, um, rent, that kind of thing. You probably don't have purchase orders set up against those. So the software still handles it completely normally um, as it would any other. Um, invoice. All we have to do with this one is um, just go through it super quick. So I'm just going to show you the speed at which you can process these documents if you're fairly comfortable and happy with them. So you can see here it's done all the same sort of thing. Um, yep, happy with that. I can just move along the line items to the footer 
to the project analysis and to the nominal analysis. So I'm just clicking one button on my keyboard each time until I'm happy. So you can see that one has now gone through and that took me while I was explaining it about what five, six seconds to do. So when we think about Gartner saying the average invoice costs you between four and 25 pounds to process, that's built up of a number of factors, one huge one of which is obviously um, the wages it costs to do it, the uh, price per hour. Um, if you can whip through invoices at that sort of speed or with no human intervention, you're saving an absolute ton of money potentially. So that's now been posted and archived and that will live in our purchase ledger transactions page and we will be able to call back that invoice document at any time we want. This one though is a bit more complicated. Um, so we're going to take a quick look at it and it will move us very nicely into our approvals module. So what sometimes happens, um, and I'm sure you will know examples in your own organisations, is you get a purchase invoice that comes in and it has multiple POs on it. So you can see here I've got two POs, triple three four and triple three seven. So if I come into my um, Stage 200, go to my purchase order list, do they exist? Triple three four, triple three seven, Donaldson's extrusions. Here they are, and they're both live. So they're in here. So a lot of systems struggle to um, be able to cope with multiple POs on one purchase invoice, but with ours, you know, we take it in our stride. So it's picked up the supplier again based on the VAT number, it's got the invoice number. And it's decided it's a document PO, but it's not filled out the order number because it's got multiple ones, so it's leaving that blank. Don't worry about this bit too much. It doesn't affect how it goes into Sage and how it matches. So if I go into my line items, you can see I've picked up my four. It's got my order numbers. I can, again, drill into it to have a look at what is on 3334. I could then, if I wanted to, change that and have a look at what's on 3337 just to make sure they match. I'll then move on to my footer. And it's got my incidentals again, the VAT rate, et cetera, projects. We don't have a project against this one, but my nominal. So you can see it's picked up four nominal codes based on the stock items of the PO. Um, again, we can insert or take away at this point. So I am just going to send that through. But what we should get now, if I close these down very quickly, we should get a different status on this one. So rather than it going to be post and archived, when it's uh, done it, it's now sent it for approval. So before it goes into Sage, it needs to be approved by a user. So if I open up my Google Chrome, this works on all or may most um, web browsers. Put in your email, your password, sign in. We don't want to save that. And what you'll be brought to is your approvals dashboard. So here is that 334, 337 approval. So this is my dashboard view. If I had multiple ones, I could click through. Um, I have all the data I need here that's relevant to it. So I can see the nominals. Um, I can see all of this data here. So it's got lots of nominal codes. I've got my document ID. I can download a copy of the invoice from here if I wanted to and I can reject and approve from this screen. When you reject, you can't actually reject a document without giving a reason. So we always make sure someone gives a reason for their rejection so that when it gets reprocessed, someone can make the necessary changes or, or effectively not try and process it again. You can approve without reason and that is fine. You just do that from here. We're not gonna do that just yet. We have other ways of looking at it as well. So we have a long requests um, section. So if you have multiple ones, you could view them all from here. You could um, filter by status. You can export them all to Excel if you wanted to. You can download copies from here. You can reject and approve. So if you had like 100 and you wanted to just do a mass approval, you could just click a button here and then approve and you can mass approve everything. What we can also do is drill into the document itself. So here I have my um, approval request. 
So I've got all my company details here. I've got my nominal analysis here. I've got an audit trail of what's happened with it here. So you can see it was created at this time. An email notification does get sent to each approver um, to let them know that they have a new invoice to approve. And um, there is a link on it and it takes you straight to the screen to approve. And you can see when it's been viewed by various people. So if you have multiple people on an approval, you can see who's looked at it, who's rejected it, who's approved it, et cetera, et cetera. If I just move that. You can download a copy or you can just look at it from this screen as well. So if you just want to get a quick view rather than downloading it, you can do that from here. If I move to the bottom, you can see who's on the approval as well. So if there's multiple people, they would show here and what their status is. So if they'd approved it and they were waiting for me to approve it, it would say they've approved it, but I need to still do something. Any comments they leave on the document as well will show up here. So you can talk to your fellow approvers in effect to let them know that you know everything's OK with it, or you might just need to check this because I'm not sure. You also have the option to reassign. Now, the reassigning button can be given and taken away because the last thing you want to do is have someone who gets sent lots of documents to approve and they just can't be bothered. So they just reassign it to um, someone who will do their work for them. Um, so you can give that and take that away if you want to. The key is you have got an admin user who can reassign any documents in case of illness, um, holidays, anything like that, if needs be. Um, so you don't have to worry about giving someone this button if you don't want them to. What we can also do is we have got the edit button here. So what can we edit? The only thing an approver can edit on this is the nominal code. So we allow you to edit the nominal codes on the invoice um, because that's the only thing we've found people in an approval status really need to do. If they do edit the nominal code, it will show within the audit trail that they have done that. So you can always see what's happened um, within your approval route. So if I just approve this, I'm not going to put any comments on it. I'm just going to say, yep, yeah, that's fine. Now you can see it's added approval request completed here. So we've got that final, final little bit of audit trail. We have our workflow. So this is how we build up our approvals route. So I won't go into this too much, but this is my approval route that I've set up. It's very simple. If the gross amount is greater than a thousand pounds, send it to myself. All of these conditions are easily managed. These are all all bits of data that we take from Sage 200. So some that are quite nice and nominal analysis and you can do that from. Sam, your sound has gone. We can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Have you got me? Oh, he's back. I was just about to say the same thing, Darren. <laughs> where, did you, where did you lose me? About 10, 15 seconds ago. All right. OK, yeah. So I was just talking about how um, I don't know how that happened, um, about how we look into Sage to create the criteria for these approvals. So order originator, whoever created the purchase order, they can then be the approver if you want something to look at within your organization on how you do your approvals. You can create as simple approvals like mine, or you can create mega complicated ones if you really want to with various different conditions on. And you could add as many approvers to this flow as you want. Um, you can have as many flows as you want, as many routes as you want. The only thing is, the more you do, the more chance you've got of them colliding and the wrong people being sent um, the requests. So I always say keep it simple. Um, things like pricing is the is the most popular way or an account manager using an analysis code. So that's how we create the routes. They're easy to manage. You probably don't need um too much consultancy to learn how to do those as you can see it's literally just pick your condition decide if it's equal to greater than less than and the value and who it needs to go to so that's my um, approvals module so now i've come back in here 
and my PO, my purchase invoices have been per posted and archived into Sage 200. So here they are, refresh the list, and they are now both completed. So if I look into those, what does that mean? Again, we've stored the purchase invoice against both POs. So you'll get the correct purchase invoice against both of the purchase orders. Brilliant. So that is that. Again, we'll look at it from a purchase ledger point of view. We can look at it from a nominal ledger point of view as well. Brilliant. So a few bits around it as well that we can talk about. I will just go into Sage to show you. If you have the um, case where you get sent an invoice for, say, in this instance, I've only received this top item and I didn't receive this bottom item, what would the system do? So what it would do is it would match against the line. So it would say, yeah, OK, I've received that one and I'm being invoiced for it. So I will put a one next to it. But the invoice doesn't include this one because I haven't received it. So this will stay at zero. The purchase order will stay as live, but it will still capture the document against it. And it won't close off the PO until it gets the invoice that then matches everything to say it's now a completed PO. And then you'll probably have one or you'll have a couple, maybe two or three invoices tagged in here so you can see exactly why that has done what it's done. OK, so that's one example. Um, we have 101 different um, examples of purchase invoices that can come through because from doing these demonstrations to people, everyone has that supplier that does things slightly differently, slightly weirdly, invoices in a really bizarre way, um, and you want to know, can the system handle it? So most cases it can. Um, it is a case by case basis. So if you do have any weird ones that you want to see working, please let us know. We can um, take some, you, we, what we can do is take your data away use those purchase invoices and put it through our system so you can see it working with your worst um, invoices um, to give you peace of mind before you invest in the software. So just on a final, final note with that, with all of this, you get the uh, document search functionality. So if you wanted to look for any of those purchase invoices, you could do it from this state here as well. Um, this doesn't require any licensing, you will have this. So um, who was my? My first one was for Formica Warehouse. Um, there's the invoice I've processed today. I can open that up at any point as well. I can filter it by any one of these on the left hand side. So you can always find that purchase invoice, whether you are a Sage 200 user or not, um, as the case may be. So that was in effect the document recognition module. Um, you saw how we get the documents into the software, how the software processes them and then posts and archives them into Sage 200 to complete the PO. Um, we looked at the approvals route and then how we find documents within Sage 200. So what I'll do is I'll open it up to any questions people may have and we'll just spend sort of 15, 20 minutes going through any questions people have got. Um, yeah, and we'll go from there. So I'll hand it back over to Rich and to Darren. Cheers. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Sam. Um, as Sam said, obviously, uh, if you want to use the chat uh, window to ask any questions, uh, you can do. If you want to raise your hand digitally, uh, we can unmute you and uh, obviously you're welcome to ask a question. I think just while we're waiting for some to come in, I've, I've Got a quick question for you, Sam, if it's all right. Yeah, I just wouldn't sure. mind asking for my own knowledge as, as much as anything is um, obviously we've got a number of customers that will create POs uh, based on um, having lots of lines. Um, and sometimes those invoices that come in only have like a summary. Um, yeah. Is there a way to handle that? Yeah, definitely. So what we've got in our latest release um, is when we look at the line items within the software, we have a button that says load line items from the purchase order. So if the invoice comes in, say, as a summary to say um, IT costs or line rental £100, but your PO is equal to £100, but it's broken down into the, say, the different sites, so London, Manchester, Derby, Birmingham, whatever it may be, 
we can press that button it will upload all the lines from the po and it will distribute the costs out to match the po um, so then it's still all matches it's all happy and it will go through um, and complete that purchase order line by line brilliant stuff yeah. sounds good um, and where do you default the nominals so the nominals are defaulted from either the purchase order and if there's not a purchase order from the supplier's default nominal we can default it from other places if it is a requirement of a customers and we have defaulted it from different areas of the software um, so it is fairly flexible but as a rule it starts from the purchase order if there's a purchase order but if there isn't we do it from the supplier's default nominal Good stuff, thank you. Um, and we had another question, somebody that requested the recording um, actually asked how long does it take to implement um, a, as a solution? Yep, so it's, it's actually quite a quick, quick one to implement. So what we tend to do is spend one day installing, configuring and training um, as a general rule. You do have, we do do an optional extra in that we can do optimize what we call optimization days and we tend to do half a day with customers three months six months nine months and 12 months down the line to make sure all the invoices are being recognized correctly make sure your processes are as efficient as humanly possible and to just you know touch up a little bit of training maybe um, if you've got someone new you've come on board or you've got some new suppliers potentially so that is what our standard or recommended um, implementation is currently um, it does also depend if you have the document management suite. So that is assuming you already have document management in place. If you don't, then that's um, that's an additional um, implementation. And, that and, so it's, and that's something that we can obviously assist with and help. Um, obviously, if, if you haven't already got that set up and, and in place. Um, and, and I think obviously there is now yeah, more. Well, I say now it's been out, it has been for a long time, but there's more than one version of, of Sage and there's more than one version of Sage 200. Um, yeah. Does this work across multiple versions or is it is it just uh, professional? Uh, so currently it's just professional. OK. Um, we are looking at trying to get it into other versions such as standard online um, but we are and intact things like that, but we are focusing primarily on Sage 200 to start with. Brilliant. Well, I was going to say there's um, last chance for any further questions. Um, I've, I've not seen any more come in, but uh, obviously if, if you do think of anything after this or if you share the video and have any further questions, um, feel free to uh, reach out to either myself or Darren um, and uh, we can hopefully answer. And if not, we can certainly get Sam uh, involved to answer those on our behalf. But um, thanks ever so much for everybody uh, that's joined and um, hopefully speak to you soon. Brilliant, thank you.